All right. Hey, traders, welcome back to another strategy lesson. In this particular lesson, we are going to be converting our breakout indicator that we created in the higher time frames and other markets section of the course into a strategy script. So the breakout indicator, the code for the breakout indicator is exactly the same. All I've done here is I've added some code to convert it into a strategy tester script. And as you can see, this script is profitable, at least on a couple of Forex pairs and some crypto pairs, which we'll cover later on in the lesson. I've adapted the strategy code to simulate risking 1% per trade or whatever we set in the settings menu. If we want to, we could bump this up to let's say 2% per trade. And now we have a 15 or 16% max drawdown with a 56% return over 195 trades with a 55, 56% win rate, which is not bad for a breakout strategy. And in this lesson, I'm going to explain all of the source code that I've added to the script to convert it into this strategy script you see here. So with that said, let's get started. All right, so first things first, I'm going to remove this script and I'm going to go and get the code to the original breakout indicator from the course and paste that into my editor. So if we load up the course, come down to timeframes and markets, get rid of my stupid face and we click on daily breakout indicator. Uh, come down, copy the source code and jump back into the trading view charts. Open up the Pine editor and paste that code in. Save my code, add it to my chart. And here we have our original breakout indicator drawing onto the chart. Now let's get started converting this into a strategy script. So if I open up the source code here, first thing I'm going to do is change indicator to strategy, change this to strategy as well leave overlay as true. Um, but one thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to set my default currency to US dollars. This will make sense why I do this later on in the lesson, but basically this is going to override the default setting. Wait for that code to compile. If I open up the settings menu and go to properties, normally this is set to default, which will change your um, currency into the second currency here in your symbol. So in this case, it would be yen. Um, or might be pounds, I can't remember, but it changes your account currency into one of these two currencies. But not many of us are going to be trading with an account currency denominated in yen or pounds. If you are using one of these currencies or any other currency other than US dollars, then change this to that currency. So for example, if I'm trading in Aussie dollars, I would change this to AUD. That way you don't need to change it in the properties tab every time you are doing a back test. So I'll change this back to US dollars, save my code, Notice down here, we have some warnings in my um, compiler window. And it says here, alert condition has no effect inside strategies. So because I've copied the indicator code over here, I need to come down to the bottom of my script and remove these two lines of code because they are redundant. Click save. And now we are ready to get started converting this into a strategy. So the first thing I'm going to do is add a, another user input here called risk per trade. And this is going to be a float input, input.float. And I'll title this risk per trade percent. So this is going to be a percentage of your account balance. And by default, it will be set to one. The next thing we need to do is come down a bit further into the code and look for where we check for breakouts. And now because we are calculating a stop loss and target that we want to pass into the strategy tester, we need to perform some error checking to ensure that we definitely have a stop loss attached to every trade. The only way we might not have a stop loss attached to a trade is if the ATR value is NA or set to null or not a number. Um, that can only happen very, very early on in our chart. If I throw on the time tool here and jump to the first bar on my chart, if we had a breakout here in the first 14 bars of this um, historical price action, then we would be entered into a trade with a stop loss that is NA or not existent. And that's a problem, obviously. Uh, I don't know if any of you have ever taken a trade without a stop loss, but it does not tend to work out well. So we need to cut this ATR indicator code and paste it up here above where we check for our breakouts and add one more check on here that says, and not NA ATR. So we have all of our conditions for the breakout, a bullish breakout in this case, 
and the ATR is not NA. And I should have mentioned this at the start of the lesson, but if you haven't watched the breakout indicator lesson, you really need to go back and watch that if you skipped it, because I'm not going to explain what all of the breakout code here does since I've already done that in that lesson. We've literally just copy and pasted the code from that original lesson, and now we're adding to it. But anyway, let me copy this code down here to our bearish breakouts, click save, and now we will never be placed into a trade that has no stop loss. And I'll be back in a moment. The council are mowing the lawn across the road in the park and it's very noisy. So I'm gonna take a break and I'll be right back when it's a little bit quieter. All right, I'm back. So we have now made it so that our script cannot enter any trades unless the ATR is a valid value and we can actually calculate a stop loss. The next thing we need to do is make sure that our script does not enter more than one trade at a time because that will mess everything up. Um, as I mentioned in the previous lesson, the way I trade and the way my broker is set up is that I can't have like a long and a short trade on the same pair open at the same time. And I don't typically pyramid my strategies, especially with this particular type of strategy where we're trading breakouts. The whole idea of the script is to capture a breakout and trade the momentum of that breakout. This very first trade you see here is a great example of when we just want to get out. This is a false breakout, a failed breakout. This is going to happen in the markets. It's impossible to catch every single winning trade or every single profitable move without occasionally taking a loss. And so if we lose on this first attempt, we get stopped out. We don't want to enter again on a second breakout because the market has already indicated that the breakout has failed and it's unlikely to continue. So what we do is we wait until the next day and then we try again. And so the whole point of this strategy is to only take one attempt per day at a breakout. So we've already got our code that makes sure that we do not take more than one trade per day. Now we need to make sure that we don't take more than one trade at a time. To do that, we need to add the and strategy dot position underscore size is equal to zero. This means that we're flat and we are not involved in a trade. So if we add this check onto our bullish and bearish breakout variables, we will now only detect bullish breakouts if we are not involved in a trade. And same for bearish breakouts. Now let's move on to entering our trades. So before we can enter a trade, we need to save our stop and target, our stop loss and target. To do that, I'm going to create two VAR float variables. The first one will be VAR float T underscore stop. And that will be initialized as NA to begin with. If you don't specify the data type here, this won't compile. If I save this, we'll get an error down here. Value with NA type cannot be assigned to a variable that was defined without a data type keyword. So if we add the data type float onto this line of code, now it will work just fine. So I need two variables here, a stop and a target. So T underscore stop and T underscore target is our trade stop and trade target. Now, when we detect a bullish breakout, we need to save our stop loss. So I'm going to reassign T stop to long stop and T target to long target. And then we need to use the strategy dot entry function to enter our long trade. This function requires an ID. So I'll just call this um, order long. And then it requires a direction. And our direction is going to be strategy dot long. That's it for now. Uh, we'll expand on this in a little bit, but for now, this is enough to enter our long trades. Now we can do the same for short trades. I can copy this code, change this to short, and this to short, and this to short, and this to short, and done. We're now entering long and short trades when bullish and bearish breakouts are detected. The next thing we need to do is check long stops and targets being hit. Uh, to do that, we'll use the strategy.exit function. And this function also requires an ID. So I can just say long exit. Then we need to tell it which order we want to exit. In this case, it's going to be our long uh, order. Then we need to specify our limit order, our profit limit. So this will be T underscore target. And our stop loss is T underscore stop. And then we need to tell this function, this exit function, when to execute. And so we need to specify when this takes a Boolean value. When this Boolean value is true, the tester system 
we'll check if our limit or our stop loss has been hit. So we want to check if we have hit our target or stop loss uh, in the case of managing our long position when we are involved in a long trade. So we need to set the when condition to when position underscore size is uh, greater than zero. If it's a positive number, we are involved in a long trade. If it's a negative number, we're involved in a short trade. So we can now check our short stops and targets being hit. I can copy this line of code, change this to short and this, and flip our operator here to negative. So if our position size is less than zero, that means we're involved in a short trade. Watch what happens now when I click save. If I reset my chart, we get a bunch of errors. <laughs> um, let me see what I messed up here. Oh, of course, I've put all of this code above where we actually calculate our stops and targets. Whoops. I need to cut all of this code that we just wrote and paste it down here beneath where we actually calculate our stops and targets. That would help save my scripts. There we go. And now we have a profitable strategy script testing on our chart. And we could end the lesson here. This is enough for you to go out and start getting an idea of whether or not this uh, script, this strategy is profitable. It will take some extra work. You may need to download this data by going to list of trades and clicking this download button and putting this data into a spreadsheet and then you can perform some extra analysis on it like I have here. This is the exported data that I've put into a spreadsheet. I can tweak my risk per position here to get an idea of what my uh, max drawdown and total gain is with um, a variation of uh, my risk per trade. It tells me my win rate. Uh, we have a bunch of other metrics here such as how the strategy performed on various days. You can see that it performs terribly on Wednesdays for some reason. We took 32 trades on a Wednesday and most of them lost. So you might want to add a filter to not take trades on Wednesday with this particular strategy. But we'll cover how to further analyze a strategy in a spreadsheet in a different lesson later on in this section of the course. For now, let's go back to our script and we'll add a few more changes to the script to improve it a little bit. So the first thing I'm going to do before we move on is change my stops and targets drawing code. I can delete two of these lines and change this to say, is our strategy dot position size not equal to zero? If so, then we want to draw our T underscore stop and our T underscore target. Otherwise, if it is equal to zero, that means we're not involved in a trade and we want to draw nothing. I'll create some more white space here to make it easy to read the code. I'll also title this trade stop and trade target. Now, when I save my code, we will be having our stops and targets drawing across the chart until one of them is hit instead of just drawing it above our signal. So that's how we do that. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is draw the stop loss size in pips above our entry. So I'm gonna change the comment of this order to include my stop loss size. And when a trade is closed, I'm going to add my equity, my current account balance, so that we can get an idea of the running performance of the strategy over historical price data. To do that, we'll come up to where we enter our positions. I'm going to create a new variable here called stop label text. And this is going to be set to the str.toString function. And then I'm going to divide our long stop distance which is this variable here, by the symbol info, siminfo.minimum tick value, and then divide that by 10. So this will give us our stop loss size in points, and dividing it by 10 will convert those points into pips. And I'm also going to format this string. So if I put a comma here, you can see that the two string function takes two optional parameters. The first one is a value to convert to a string, a number to convert to a string. The second parameter, is how to format that string. So if I put in here a string with a hashtag and a full stop and a hashtag, this will kind of round down our stop loss. So I'll show you what this does. If I add a comment on the end of our entry here and I say long in brackets stop loss equals stop loss equals plus and then add our stop label text, then plus and then I can finish this off with pips. If I save this code and try to find a long trade, here's one here, uh, you can see that it 
now says that our stop loss size is 23.5 pips. This is useful for backtesting purposes in terms of like adding the data manually into a spreadsheet, for example. That way you don't need to use the measurement tool to measure out your stop loss on every trade. This is particularly useful if you're using a risk reward that is not one-to-one. -one. So like if you're using a 1.2 risk reward profile, for example, you can input that data into a spreadsheet and it makes it a little bit easier to calculate your return on a trade-by-trade -trade basis. Um, let's also add our equity to the end of our uh, exit text here. So for that, we have a long exit. I'll add a comment on the end here. And this comment will say short exit in brackets equity. And then we'll add uh, the str.to string, our strategy.equity that will get our current account balance from the tester system. And I'll also format this as hashtag, 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 comma, hashtag, 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 comma, hashtag, hashtag. Then I'll close off our parentheses of this two string function here. We'll add another text parentheses to close off this parentheses here in our comment, in our text. And then we need to close off the parentheses of our entire um, strategy exit function. Now when I save this code, this should work okay. There we go, I need to add another hashtag in there. Save that. There we go, it's showing our account balance is 100,000. That's because we're only trading one unit, so one dollar worth of this current market. We'll get to position sizing in a moment, but for now, uh, let's add this text to our short exit as well. I can just copy this line of code down here. And sorry, I did write that as short, that should say long. Um, and what I'll do before we move on is start splitting this function across multiple lines so that it's just a little bit easier to read since my screen size, my resolution is so high. Uh, now remember to split a function across two lines or multiple lines, you need to press enter, tab, and then a single space. So I'll do that for all of these parameters. And now we can read our function a little bit clearer. So now if I come up to the settings menu and we go to properties and I change my order size to let's say one standard lot, so 100,000 contracts, click okay. Now you can see that our equity has changed. We now have 107,550 bucks US dollars as our equity. So, so far so good. This is definitely improved upon the bare minimum, the bare basics that we had a few minutes ago. Now let's do one last thing. Let's add code that will calculate a position size of 1% of our account balance per trade. All right, so while editing this video, I changed my mind. And instead of including the code for calculating our position size based on a percentage of our account balance in this lesson, I'm going to split that off into its own standalone lesson since the code we'll be writing is technically applicable to any strategy script and not just this one. But before we wrap up this lesson, there is one last thing I want to address, which is an issue I encountered while working on this script on a real-time bar during a real-time breakout. So I'll play the rest of this lesson, then we'll wrap it up and I'll speak with you in the next lesson where we'll go over calculating our position size as a percentage of our account balance. Now the code we'll be writing for that is most applicable to Forex, but it should work on other markets too with a little bit of tweaking. Anyway, let's continue with the lesson. Now notice that on the current bar, we have a signal that was just confirmed, a breakout, a close above the previous day's high, but we do not have our stop loss and target drawing onto the chart yet. The reason for that is that we do not have recalculate on every tick turned on. So this setting only applies to real-time bars. This bar is a real-time bar. We just had a confirmed signal, but our stops and targets won't start drawing until the next bar has been confirmed and the script will execute its code again. But if we turn this on, once we receive some tick data, once price moves, there we go. Now we have our stops and targets drawing onto the chart. Now notice that our entry is up here. That's because I turned uh, this setting on in the middle of the current real-time bar. Now, the only way for me to fix this issue where we're entering way up here, where the current um, bar's closing price is, is to open up my source code, remove the script and add it back to my chart and then turn on, after uh, recalculate after order is filled and recalculate on every tick. Now we are entering at the correct price with our stops and targets drawing. This is only a problem on real-time bars. So once you set up your alerts and the alerts um, dialog and you've selected your script, if you're automating your script through a third party or something like that, this kind of problem won't happen. 
But because we're currently working on the script and we just had a real-time breakout, uh, the script is kind of acting funny when we have these two options turned off. It's performing fine on historical price action because the script is only calculating its values and executing its code on candle closes. But because this is a real-time bar, we're getting this funky behavior out of the strategy tester because our script is recalculating itself in the middle of a real-time bar when really it should have only executed on the close of this previous bar. So again, the way we fix this is if I open up the source code, remove the script, add it back to my chart, and then uh, turn on these two options. Now we are getting our correct behavior out of our script. But again, you only need to do this if your script is generating a signal on a real-time bar and you're in the middle of working on your script. If I'd left this script running an hour ago and this breakout had occurred in real time, so long as I had this option turned on, uh, this behavior shouldn't be happening. All right, so I hope you found this lesson interesting. I'm gonna wrap this up here. And in the next lesson, we'll pick up where we left off regarding our position size calculation code. I'll see you there.